guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new here welcome to my channel I'm Julia and today I'm going to talk about that DTF uh, transfer hack the where you print on DTF transfer film with your inkjet printer and then sprinkle it with a DTF powder um, you've probably seen the technique on YouTube I'm not going to go over the actual technique what I'm going to do is give you an honest review on these techniques um, I've been doing t-shirts for about since 2010 on and off and I actually started doing sublimation on polyester t-shirts and sweatshirts and I stopped doing that because I didn't like the quality of the polyester I thought it was a little bit too thin and my customers thought they were a little bit too thin too so I was always looking for a way to print full color designs on cotton or cotton blend so it's been a long journey <laughs> um, I can't do a DTG printer just quite yet. I know a lot of people can't. Um, it's, it's it's expensive to get started in that. So I have done many different techniques. I've tried Chromoblast inks inside a Chromoblast printer. I also done some other transfer papers um, that will print through with your inkjet printer and onto um, cotton or cotton blends. So this is videos basically a review on those different techniques and then I'm at the end of the video I'm going to give you what I think would be a very good alternative if you're looking to start a t-shirt business where you're putting full color images on cotton and cotton polyester blends so um, let's get started and I'll, I'll bring you really close to those um, images I'll show you the colors I'll show you how it feels on the garment and the washability so I'll wash them and I'll show you what they come out like so let's get started so let's start with the DTF transfer film now this is um, what you've been seeing on all over YouTube and even on TikTok um, using the transfer powder as well um, basically taking one of these transfer films running it through your printer and then quickly putting the transfer powder on um, and then heating it up and putting putting it onto a t-shirt. Now you've seen the technique. I'm actually not going to show you the techniques unless you really want me to in, an, in a future video. But I want to show you the output and the realistic or the reality of doing this uh, DTF transfer hack. So let's start with the actual transfers. Um, I'll show you reality, um, basically how they come out and what you have to do in order for them to come out clean. Um, so let's look at that first. Okay, what commonly happens when you put these films into your printer, um, I use a sublimation printer, SG800. It's an older model printer. Um, the SG1000 is the newest one for sublimation. So I use a sublimation printer to print this printout. Now if you look close, you see a, some graininess. So the sublimation printers don't like this particular film. And I used um, the brand Yamation, Yamation. Um, and I found that it works, it does the same thing with pretty much every transfer film, uh, DTF transfer film, because it's really not made for sublimation printers. So even though you put like a piece of paper, it does grab it fine, but you also have to um, make the image so that it's uh, from the, this, this, this half of the paper I put in first. And so it will do this a lot. So um, it's, it's kind of inconsistent. Um, you normally have to make this image really like another, maybe another half inch or inch away from the side that's going in, into the printer. Now notice the image, it's very grainy. So it's, it's gonna come out like that, okay? And versus, I'll give you, this is the way it's supposed to look. See how clear that is and solid? All right, so this is the DTF. So it's gonna come out like that on the shirt or whatever you're putting it on. Now, I'd put this through a bypass tray because I have a bypass tray. If you don't put it through a bypass tray, this is what happens. <laughs> so this is not very pretty, obviously. Um, I put this in the regular paper tray and did the same thing by attaching a um, the text print uh, DT transfer paper on there. So it did grab it fine, but the ink smeared, obviously, <laughs> and that's not very pretty. 
So and that's from putting this into the paper tray, the actual paper tray, not using the bypass tray. So I just wanted to give you guys a tip on that. Obviously you don't want to put it in the regular paper tray. Okay, let's go with the next example of the DTF film hack that you see. This is an actual print from my sublimation printer on regular text print uh, paper. So this is how the image should look. It's nice and solid in color. And um, with a sublimation printer, the prints are always going to be slightly um, dull until you actually put it on the substrate. So this would be very vibrant and it would come out perfectly. So this is the DTF film. We'll go over that again and forget this because that was just me fooling around with it. But if you can look close again, it's very grainy. So sublimation, I believe inkjet would do the same thing because you're, you're printing on the film. This is the film right here, DTF film. Um, just because your machines aren't really made to print on this type of film, you get some graininess kind of looks like a watercolor on a glossy surface that dried. And of course, that trans this is the t-shirt. That graininess will transfer onto the t-shirt and any other um, weirdness that you have going on <laughs> with your printer, you'll see that as well. Um, and you can see the image here is starting to kind of chip off. And that happens a lot too. Um, so it doesn't look very professional, to be honest. And any, like I said, any kind of small little uh, ink spots that you might have around your image is going to show up. So, I mean, if you were to look at it from a distance, it doesn't look bad, <laughs> but honestly, it's not something I would sell. Um, it does feel like a sticker a little bit. Um, you know, it, it does feel like a sticker. I have not washed these yet, so I don't know the quality. Um, but I will do that for this video so we can see what it looks like after a wash. But as you can tell, it's very, I don't know, it feels like paper, uh, like a glossy paper, like a sticker. So going back to the DTF film um, design on uh, the shirt, uh, one thing that's has it has a limitation you can't do anything beyond white if you want the original colors because you've put it on something like say a gray shirt oops excuse all the minky stuff here from my stockings um, there you go so if you put it on a gray t-shirt this is the it's going to take in the color of the t-shirt so your design is now going from this vibrancy here, put them together. So now your design looks like it's been muted because you have the gray. Because your printer doesn't print white underneath this color. So it's going to be taking on the color of the t-shirt. Okay, so it's not as vibrant as that, but still has the watercolor effect <laughs> or the um, graininess. So it's not very clear. So um, yeah, I would stick to the white if you're gonna do something like this uh, as a gift for somebody. Honestly, I would not sell it um, just because it doesn't look very good compared to your competition. If you were to do um, this, it doesn't look very good. Okay, now let's talk about um, another product. It's called Jet Pro SS. It's a soft stretch and you put this through your, your printer, your inkjet printer, or your sublimation printer, and all you're doing, you don't need the powder. You don't need this powder right here. Um, that's only for the DTF film. But this is a transfer you, you print on, and you just basically heat press your image onto the shirt. Um, so I have a couple examples of this one. Um, this is another technique I don't really recommend. Like I said, unless you're doing a gift for somebody, but I would not personally sell items using this paper um, unless you're putting it maybe on a tote. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It comes out super vibrant. It's really nice at first. <laughs> so there's, there's a butt after this, but anyway, so as you can see, it comes out really great. So it's pretty solid. 
and it feels like screen print. So it feels like it's been screen printed on. It does, however, have a binder. And let me see if I can get it on camera. You can't really see it in this lighting, but you can really see it in person um, in daylight. So if you can see that right here, see the binder? It's, it's like a very translucent sticker. So you can see that in the daytime pretty good. Um, now you don't, now you, you want to use this, uh, transfer paper only on lights. Uh, they have one for darks, but that looks like a sticker as well. Um, in my opinion, it looks worse than this. So it comes out really good on a white, um, t-shirt until <laughs> you wash it. Unfortunately, um, it goes from this and then this is after one wash to this. Now, on camera, you might not be able to see that much of a difference, but in person you do. And unfortunately, that binder that I pointed out before, they, they say it's supposed to disappear and it actually gets worse, um, to be honest, in my opinion. It just looks worse. And I cut my design really close to the actual, well, I cut my paper close to the design. So that binder, you wouldn't see so much. So you can even see it here. It looks like a sticker. Um, now you can't really feel it because it's very thin, but the design itself, let's do a comparison. I'll put these side by side. Okay. I'm putting these side by side on camera. It's very hard to tell, but this is the shirt with a design that has not been washed yet. And this is the one that has been now, like I said, you can't really tell on camera, but you definitely notice a difference. Now what's great is soft stretch actually keeps the black blacks and we'll talk about chromoblast inks, uh, chromoblast inks, which is a different, um, technique, uh, doesn't keep the blacks black. They keep the blacks turn brown after the first wash, whereas the soft stretch, which is what this is, keeps the blacks black and they don't turn brown. So that's a plus on the soft stretch side. But still, I mean, this still feels like a screen print. I love the feel of this, but again, you can only do it on whites because if you were to do it on a colored shirt, um, it would come out faded kind of like that. Um, it, you would see the t-shirt fabric come through. So, um, I suppose I, I, this is something that would bother me. Honestly, if I were to see this after the first wash, Again, it's very hard to see on camera. I'm trying to get a good angle, um, but it would bother me if this happened after the first wash. This is something I would expect after maybe 20 washes, not after one. Um, and I used cold, I turned it inside out. I mean, I did everything to make it so that it would not um, fade as much, but I'm trying to give you a, uh, it's hard to see. So I'm trying to give you a, the best view but there is a huge difference in person, in my opinion. It, it's just, it's faded considerably. And again, you can't, like I'm looking through my phone here. I'm not seeing a huge difference through the phone, but in person you can see it. Plus you can see that binder. In the sunlight, in the daylight, you'll be able to see that. Cause it, it turned, it seems to turn like a yellow a little bit. Um, but anyway, I mean, this would be a good alternative to the DTF if you were looking to do just a white, you know, gift for somebody. I would probably prefer this over the DTF hack using DTF. Like this, I would not recommend to use with this. Uh, I would use the soft stretch instead. I would use this over the DTF film with the DTF powder because it just produces a better result in my opinion. But still, it's not something I would sell. <laughs> so I just want to say that. But it's good if you're doing like a gift or something and not for a business. Unless you're doing tote bags. You know, I could see this as being acceptable for like a tote bag because you're not washing it as much as a t-shirt. Um, but again, I don't know, that would bother me <laughs> if, it, if it went that, that faint after the first wash. I'm assuming it's not going to get any fainter after the first wash. I think the first wash is basically where it gets 
you know, where it loses the most color. So let's talk about chromoblast inks. Now you would need um, a chromoblast printer with the chromoblast inks. Uh, that's like around $600 for the uh, SG500 with chromoblast inks. So that would be very similar to the soft stretch. Now I don't have an example for the chromoblast, but I have used it in the past. And I can tell you it has the same feel as a soft stretch, this paper. It has the same feel. And I would say that the soft stretch is better as far as the quality of the colors. Because with the chromoblast inks, I've noticed that anything that's black after the first wash will turn brown. So it, it's very noticeable and it does fade the actual image. So, um, so that's just another thing. It, so it has the same problem as a soft stretch, but the soft stretch, as far as the black inks, um, stay in the design. Okay guys, it's the next day and I did wash these shirts with the DTF film hack. And it did lose a little bit of the color um, because it was printed. That's what I'm guessing, but it still has that feel. It has that paper feel, but it did fade just a little bit. It actually um, seemed to meld into the shirt a little bit more though than, than pre-washing. But still you have the um, grainy image, so that doesn't change. But uh, yeah, here it is on the gray. So yeah, um, it did fade a little bit after the first wash. So, so far I've been giving you, I gave you three basically examples and I haven't really recommended any one of them yet. <laughs> so let's move on to something that I do recommend if you are looking to do full color on a cotton or cotton blend t-shirt and other than the color of white. So let's, let's get into that. So what do I recommend? I recommend that you actually leave the DTF transfers to the professionals because they have the equipment uh, to do very nice transfers. Now this was, um, this is Stahl's Transfer Express. Um, I got this in a sample pack last year and um, they produce really nice transfers as well as other companies too. Uh, Transfer Express isn't the only company out there. There's also Supacolor, but this wasn't expensive at all. Um, actually I had to, like this design right here is not expensive. Uh, it kind of depends on the quantity that you're buying too, but this is a 10 and a half by, I think it was six and a half inch design um, that I entered into Transferred Express. And it costs, for six of them, it costs around um, four to five dollars, if I remember correctly. So it's not very expensive and you can just, for a transfer, uh, they're very easy to apply and you don't have to do anything to it. It's on a transfer sheet and you just press it onto the t-shirt and you're done. So this is a very um, cost-effective way to do your designs. If you're really on a budget, I would do like just one design that you know is going to sell and then pick one color of like a sweatshirt or a t-shirt, you know, keep it under $100 and you can get started. Um, sweatshirts obviously retail um, for a little bit more than a t-shirt so that might be something to consider and also we're in the colder season right now so you know pick a sweatshirt color that you know sells really well find a design that you know is going to sell just start off with one just start off with one design and one you know sweatshirt color or one t-shirt color and there you go, it, it's, it will snowball. So once you sell those, you'll be able to buy more transfers and put them on more um, t-shirts or sweatshirts. So that's what I recommend. Either um, Stahl's Transfer Express is a good one. Um, this is their Ultra Color Max. It's for low minimum orders. So if you just want like one or two of an order, I mean one or two of a design, and then they have you know the um, Ultra Color Soft and this is more cost effective if you're gonna buy like a, you know, like 20, 50, that type of quantity. So um, yeah, that's what I recommend. <laughs> and just a note too, guys, um, you can, I have this on a white shirt, but this will go on like a black shirt. Um, 
but it doesn't take on the t-shirt color. So it sits on top of the fibers because these are made with white ink under the color. So you're gonna see all this color on like a black shirt or a dark colored shirt. Well guys, I hope that video was helpful. Um, as far as the do-it-yourself DTF transfer hack, I would do that just for like gifts uh, for your family, friends type of thing, but not for your business, t-shirt business, I don't recommend it. In my opinion, um, if you go with a professional service like Stalls Transfer Express or Super Color, which also does a lot of great um, color transfers as well. I'll leave those links down below. I am not affiliated. I don't have affiliate links for these. So it's just basically my opinion on who puts out really good transfers. So anyway, I hope that was helpful and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.